Hey there, welcome to the Wonky Quilter. I'm Kim Bourgeois Landry. Thank you for joining me today. I tell you, um, I haven't been posting too much because I can't sew. I haven't been able to sew in probably, I don't know, it feels like three months. I don't know how long. I sit down, I turn on the machine, I do three or four stitches, I'm dissatisfied. I, um, what I can do is go to my favorite uh, seam rippers. You know I love a good seam ripper. Um, but I don't feel the joy. So, my husband and I and uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law went on a East Coast vacation. We went on a lobster eating vacation. We went to Maine and Massachusetts, which was on my brother-in-law's um, bucket list. And he was real sick last year, so um, we thought, you know what, what are we waiting for to do the bucket list? Like, what are we waiting for to do the things that bring you joy and make you happy and the things that you've always wanted to do? So, while I was on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, like a little Victorian woman, I just decided I really need to heal what is going on. I mean, I still, I still talk about quilting. I still think about it constantly. I'm still searching out um, fabrics and um, information and teachers and, um, you know, people who just, you know, get me like that. And uh, some stuff came to me. The salty water of the East Coast was really healing. Healing doesn't always feel good, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like I have got to get back to basics. Um, in October of last year, I went to study with the G's Bin Quilters which had been on my bucket list. I mean, oh my gosh, who doesn't want to study with the G's Bin Quilters, especially if you're a hand quilter. But I mean, you know, they're doing uh, machine, machine stitching. Most of the women and men who show up to study with them, I've, I've gotten to study with them um, over um, a four or five day class twice now. I've been so blessed, so I'm grateful for that. But. Um, Going to a class like that, I decided instead of um, hand stitching, which is what my joy is, I really should learn to use a sewing machine. I have a sewing machine, a very nice um, Brother SE 400 that I bought um, from a friend who's a very good quilter, professional quilter. And this, um, she had upgraded several times, but this one was at her house and available, so I purchased it and she gave me some little lessons and I started sewing and I went to my first class and you know, it's not a class, it's a, um, it's a retreat, but that was like four days. One whole day was travel, but that was four days of being at a machine from the morning until, I mean, it ended at about five, between five and seven, but you could sew all night if you wanted to. So I learned a lot that first few days. After that, I started searching out different kinds of fabric. Um, before, I had been um, searching out old fabrics, you know, at um, estate sales and garage sales and, um, you know, flea markets and antique shops and Goodwill. and. Um, but really, I was looking for old fabrics because what I do is I collect quilt tops, you see? this quilt top. I bought this in, uh, I think, Alabama. Although it might have been Arkansas. I struggle with Alabama and Arkansas. <laughs> Always, whatever. If I say Arkansas, it was probably Alabama. Um, this beautiful hand quilted, I mean, um, hand pieced top. I collect tops and that's it. And that's what I hand quilt. Well, once I started using my machine, I started looking for different kinds of fabric, you know? All of a sudden, I am, I, I have gotten away from um, 
the battery that keeps my clock ticking. I am having great fun, you know, sewing on a machine. It's so quick, it's so fast. It, you get instant results. You can um, create something out of your magic. I mean, you can imagine it. An image can come up and you can sew it in the next hour. I mean, it's that fantastic. Um, so in the meantime, I'm getting so excited showing y'all all my beautiful fabrics. You see, I think I told y'all a couple weeks ago, maybe it was three weeks ago, I'd ordered a big, um, I think these were ends of bolts or something. I'm not sure. A, a, an actual fabric company, uh, quilting store, um, sold these. I bought them because I love the peppercorn fabrics. I know y'all are tired of hearing about peppercorn. I don't care, okay? I'm gonna keep talking about her. <sighs> Look at that. But you know what? These aren't really gonna fill in some um, torn and bad spots from the hand quilted stuff. I, I need to make something new and fabulous with these, you know? Um, and what I'm recognizing is that I have, since October of last year, I didn't mean to, I was going to a um, G's Bin quilting retreat that was in the path, that was in the direct path of what gives me joy, hand stitching. And somehow, I managed to get myself all sidetracked. I am now, this was something else I was supposed to tell you about. These are all beautiful fabrics, scrap fabrics. They are scrap fabrics, but from a local quilting store. And that's not where you go to find, um, you know, 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, 20s fabrics, you know, from way back. These are awesome. <laughs> I'll sew something with these. I mean, I'm really, um, Interested in the gypsy wife, and I think I have a lot of new fabrics that are gonna work This was about 25 20 or 25 dollars, I guess But it is It's some poundage. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe it was $20 But getting back to what actually Works for me what actually makes me want to quilt every day is slow stitching. And not just slow stitching on my machine, but with a needle and a thread. Today, this, this quilt right here, this quilt top, this was part of my, my grandmother's, um, this was left at my mother's house when my grandmother, um, Virgie, Snodgrass Harris died. She was living with my mom, way far away from her home. Um, and we found this, my sister did, packed in a suitcase, like, I don't know, underneath something, where she had hidden it away, I'm sure in case she ever got bored and she forgot it was there. Um, I know that she did not piece these. My grandmother, um, did not consider herself a piecer, although she knew how to do it. I think she did it when she was a young woman. She bought from um, women that she called piecers because uh, she wasn't as interested in sewing as she was a quilting. She bought tops. How is this just occurring to me that I'm doing the same thing? She bought tops um, from women around her county People would, I can remember people calling her and saying, I have two tops. And she'd say, oh, I want to look at them. Or they would describe, they would say, it's a Dresden plate, it's a da-da-da, it's these colors. And she'll say, I, I'll take them both, or I will take one, or I, I can't afford to do it at this time. Or are you going to be at the senior center on Saturday for the quilting bee? Uh, let me see them before you go inside, before anybody else sees them. <laughs> Or before any of the old ladies, she would say. Like, she was in her, like, 80s at that time. But before any of the old ladies would see them. And she bought from the best piecers. And, um, and she did the quilting. And then she had a quilt to sell. Um, and this was tucked away. Look at that. 
I'm probably, I don't know if I will ever quilt that. Actually, I have an upholstered um, headboard. Last year I thought about putting this, um, having this put as upholstery on it. It's so pretty. Um, the colors are very in vogue right now, gold and rust and cream and navy and um, a pretty green and peachy, great colors. Anyway, it's occurring to me that um, I need to ask myself some questions. And they all float around my grandmother and my mother, and that is, why do I quilt? And I quilt, I think because I was missing my mom. Um, after my mom died, I started quilting. They wanted me to quilt. I didn't want to. You know, I just didn't. My grandmother tried to teach me. She really did. She tried to teach me hard. Um, when I was a little girl, we visited once a year, and I... I listened to everything she said, and I participated. I'd sit next to her and do it, but I thought that it was like what old ladies did. But those things have come back to me now. I can remember things that she said when I was a little girl. I think some piece of her must have known um, that I was a quilter and that she could um, lay that with me. And I'm not the only quilter in my family. There are several women. I don't know of any men, but there are several women in my family. Um, granddaughters and great-granddaughters and nieces um, that can feel her standing behind them. You know, that really can. So um, I really, after this vacation, you know, listening to the waves come in and looking at the um, beautiful gray and white and black little cottages on the east coast and feeling the peace and the quiet. Everything was just quiet and gray and calm. Maybe gray doesn't sound good, but gray feels to me as a very neutral ground, like very a very clear place. And I ask myself, why do I quilt? Um, what brings me joy about quilting? Why can't I sew anymore? And it occurred to me, uh, a question is, do I need to put the machine away? And I think I, I don't know how I did it, but I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with the machine because I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, but I think it took me out of my groove of what it is that makes me love stitching. And that's a needle and a thread. And it's the quiet and it's no machinery other than electric lights, <laughs> you know, um, and maybe a podcast in my earphones. Um, and really the only machine I've ever wanted was a treadle machine like my grandma bourgeois, my dad's mom, who, to the day she died, if she was had to sew something, she was treadling. Treadle, treadle. Sometimes she'd let us treadle for her. <laughs> um, and I, that's the machine I want. And maybe to travel, I'll, I'll have like a little um, black, uh, one of those little baby singers. What are they called? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Um, electric machine that does nothing but go forward and backward the end and it's tiny um, I can't think of what they're called right now but I have to remember um, what it is that made me love it and it is so easy to be sidetracked so really kind of every once in a while stop and think about it. I have I been sidetracked? Is this what my art is? Um, I look around my sewing room. These are my mother's quilting hoops. This is a hand done quilt by um, Marianne, one of the G's Bend quilters. These are all pieces of folk art. This metal piece, all handmade stuff. My cousin made this beautiful thing right up here for me. Oops, sorry about that. And it says, Virgie's Quilting Bee, and Virgie was my um, grandmother, and that's a piece of cedar from the Harris Farm, where my mother grew up, you know. 
And when I look in what's in all of these cabinets all around, it's all hand pieced things. And um, I got a little sidetracked. I still have a lot of things to show y'all. I'm not gonna just plumb give up on the modern day stuff. But I'm gonna pull out my um, my hand quilting, and I'm gonna be ready to stitch with Miss Peppercorn and a couple of the other teachers um, that teach hand work in Houston, and I'll be looking forward to it. I'll be start practicing and warming up my little fingers, and I guess no more fancy fingernails. We gotta get back to basics. Getting back to basics. Anyway. Thanks for joining me. If you like this, please like, share, and send me a comment so I know what you like and what you like to might like to hear more about. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye.